All right, guys, so let me show you what I'm going to be doing today, which is to give you an overview of some of the additions that I have made to the previous video. And in this video, I added a couple more things, like I had a prefab option, so we can now specify whether we, you know, whether we have a window or we have a door. And I had some of these settings already. I just been organizing everything, like if we want to include a roof, camp inside walls, and window percent chance, and also door percent chance. And let me show you some of these settings, how they work, and then we can go through and then explain. I can explain to you the other ones. So I also renamed rows and columns. This used to be called X and Y, actually width and height. And it wasn't really intuitive to me, so I ended up just changing it to rows and columns because that's really what they are, because we're also dealing with cells. So the, the cool thing about these new tools is now any change that I make to any setting is going to regenerate the, basically run the algorithm one more time. So if I were to change the columns, you can see that the columns are changing. Also the windows are changing because those are procedural as well. I can also change, you know, whether I want a skinny building or, you know, a much bigger building. If I want to change how many floors I have, I can go down. You can see that we now have doors, which is something new that I just added. I can make a very tall building. And I, I kept it between, I think it's 1 and 20. I didn't want to go higher than that. But, you know, if we want to change it, we can change it later. So the other cool thing that I can do too is I can split these buildings into multiple buildings and I can do that by changing the cell unit size. So if I change this to, you know, something like 1.6, you're going to see that I'm starting to get more buildings. I can create maybe, you know, very tall building and skinny building. And, and you can see if I look in here that we now have, you know, like towers that look a tower city per se. So it's a lot of functionality, a lot of a lot of things that I, I can do now. And if I change this back to one, I can, you know, and I can change everything to one, 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 and one, and we just start with a little cube because that's basically everything. All it takes is just a little cube and then just dynamically creating, you know, creating everything. And now we have like little houses in here. I can go up and so so that's the that's the cool thing about this is I can you know I can change settings and those settings are going to generate things and those things can become you know part of our games and if I change the window percentage chance so these two settings are really important because they are percentages right so what this is saying right now is I I'm going to tell the system to use at least 63 percent of the time on every generation we're going to get windows this one says 63% of the time we're going to get doors. So if I were to change this, you're going to see that I'm not getting doors, but now we're getting a chance of 20%. So some of them are getting doors. And then as you go up, and this should probably be a max of one because you can really, you can't really do 200%. You can only do 100%. So I'm going to change that as well. And then also this one should only, should only go up to one. And those are really easy to change. So I'm going to show you those in the code. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go back and then I'm gonna let's go ahead and set this to two, two, and then one. And then I think the, the percentage I'm gonna just set it as default. Let's do let's do 0 0.5 and then I'll do 0 0.5 on the doors as well. I think that's a good start. So some of the things that I want to cover in this video is not only the, the script and the functionality that I added, but I also want to cover the prefab. So the prefabs that I have right now, you notice that I have doors. So I'm going to just turn off lighting right now so that we can see everything better. I'm going to just resize and then focus on the scene view just a little bit more. Then I'm going to look at some of the prefabs. So you saw that I have doors. So this component right here, this prefab, is the one that resembles a door. So the cool thing with this, though, is now I can change, you know, if I want to change the door, let's say that I want to change the color of the door, all I really have to do is go to the material. Let's say that I want a door that is maybe, you know, much lighter. You can see that it's, it's changing right away. And then if I go ahead and hide this and we regenerate everything, let's go ahead and add a little bit more and see that the doors are changing. The, the other thing that I can do too, and this is how I work, is I, I work on prefabs and then I change those prefabs. I tell the system to regenerate everything and then and then that, that basically regenerates. So let's say that we wanted to do something different. Let's go, let's go ahead and look into the look at the prefab inside of the prefab so that we don't we don't change anything incorrectly and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the door and i'm going to just you know duplicate it and then we're going to just make a little basically a little map and or a little ramp on the very bottom of the door and the reason why i want to do that is because i want to show you how 
easy it is to change the look and feel and then which allow us to dynamically generate this thing and then by just making a change to a prefab so let's say that we have that here and then this is you know it's going to be a bigger map so we can just say this is going to be you know when you go into a house and there is a little carpet in there that's going to be what i'm what i'm creating right now so we can just let's go ahead and make it something like that and then what i'm going to do here we can just call it the carpet on the materials i'm going to create a new material this is going to be the carpet carpet material and of course if we want to go more in depth we can say you know we can add textures we can for now we're just going to keep it simple it's going to do you know something simple it doesn't have a lot of detail it's just a different color and maybe this one we can do and uh, let's see what i can do let's go ahead and do maybe just do something like that something different that stands out so that we can so that we can see the changes so this one is going to be called carpet so it's going to call it carpet there we go and then i'm going to just go ahead and go back and make sure that my prefab has the changes so i'm going to apply those changes and you notice that these don't have those yet because at this time that basically that the model didn't have the carpet so if i were to hide this and we can go ahead and go ahead into the procedural generation and then i can just change one setting and you're going to see that we're starting to see you know some of the carpets i'm actually going to change this color because it's really really hard to see and we can do let's see if i can choose we can choose something different maybe a blue a light blue or i think i like white i think i'm just gonna stick with white i think that's fine so you know that was that easy and now we have now we have carpet so the cool thing with that though is now i can say okay i want to add more buildings and and let's say that we want to change the unit size now our little houses have carpets and if i don't like how many how many doors i have with carpets i can go here into the pro gen and then change the percentage of the door and then we can you know we can go lower in in the number of doors that we have so it just provides a lot of functionality and, and of course these are not real buildings because you don't really see buildings like these that have three doors but you get the idea i think this is just something that we can use to to generate a lot of structures without having to model a lot a lot of things so and i'll see how how easy how easy that was so what i want to do next is also show you some of the other prefabs that i have and we're not going to be changing those i'm also going to be let me go ahead and go back to that prefab because i don't i don't really like how it looks and what i'm going to do here i like things that are symmetrical so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that the size of this matches the size of the door because if no it's going to bug me it's going to drive me crazy and we can do something like that and then the door probably should be touching the 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 bottom but it's really hard it's it's fine i don't think we need to or actually let's just do it let's just fix it we're right here and then we'll just resize this one a little bit there we go okay now now i'm gonna be happy and then we can go back to to everything to the project and then regenerate it okay now it's sized perfectly i i do like that better I like things that are you know aligned okay so so this is great and then now you might ask okay Delmore can you show us show us the code and that's what I'm gonna do next so I want to show you the editor tool first because it's really simple and some of the changes that I made so this one I, I added an editor extension well not an editor extension I think that's what they're called it's just basically a way to override the the component that holds the logic and this just creates an inspector uh, editor so what I can do with this is I can add buttons, I can basically customize the inspector and create an editor tool with a lot more functionality. So in this case, all I did is I added, you know, I got the progen. So progen is the procedural generation that I created last time that I've been modifying. I append editor on it and then I'm inheriting from editor. You also need to specify this is a custom editor for this class, which is the class that we have right here. And then I also added a button just in case we wanted to just click on that button to regenerate everything. And I also did something that was actually pretty easy and it's GUI change. So anytime the GUI change, anything on the GUI, if you change the slider, if you hit a button, whatever you do that you change is going to call this method generate. And this is the one that is going to regenerate the, the actual structure. So that's how this part works. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on the on the progen. So progen changed quite a bit. I have more functionality. 
this used to be called procedural generator and I think it was too long and I, I want to I want to just you know call it something short and then so I show you these I added a header prefab options I have walls I have roof prefab window prefab door prefab I also tell the system whether to include a roof or not, keep inside walls so I show you that before these are new and this is the percentage of chance that we're going to be getting you know we're going to be getting a door or we're going to be getting a window I also told you that I was going to make this mo actually go to a max of one so to do that I'm going to go zero floats and then we're going to go up to one and that's going to allow us to add a that's going to add a slider for us and also make a minimum and max of zero to one because you only go to 100 percent I think this is this is fine the the other thing that I did is I also added grid options I it, this used to be called width and height so now I have a header it's called grid options because this is really the area where we handle a grid I also have a max of you know 20 the minimum of one same thing here and these are integers so you want to don't use floats on those and then I also have the cell unit size I set it from 0 to 20 it's a float so that's why I'm adding a slider there and then number of floors is an integer so I add a slider there but this used to be all basically numbers that you type in now with the range I can add slider so it makes it a lot easier then a reference to my floors I also on the awake method I just call generate and I'm also keeping track of the rooms now the actual prefabs because I clearing I, I need to clear them and if you don't keep track of them and then you just call find objects in scene it's actually pretty slow so it's faster if you store them and then keep track of them and then dispose them then I also have a prefab counter because I wanted to make sure that I keep track of everything that I'm adding and then I'm using that number to label so if I create a wall and I create a wall again the first wall is going to be wall underscore zero second wall is going to be wall underscore one so this generic method is the one that does most of the work and I initialize the prefab counter I clear everything I build the data structure that I need for the render to create the buildings and then if I don't want to use wall I don't want to keep inside walls I remove them otherwise I keep them these I want to optimize because I shouldn't have to remove prefabs I should be able to tell the data structure what walls are going to be inside walls and then and then which ones are not going to be inside walls so I need to I need to work a little bit more on that to build that but for now it's just going to it's just going to remove it so this is going to be an optimization change that we need to do so the first thing that I do on the build data structure I basically initialize the floors I initialize the floor count I loop through all my floors because we need to create these for multiple floors and then I create a I create a two-dimensional array for rooms and then I loop through my rows and then my columns so this is a lot cleaner than it used to be I also get the room position by getting the current row and I multiply by the cell unit size I initialize the, the floor count so Y is going to be the floor count so if we if we start at zero the value of y is going to be zero if we go to one and then so on also the same thing for c this is going to be our depth this is going to be our z axis so i use column and i multiply by the cell unit size and then i just basically initialize my rows with whether i'm going to so with my room position and also whether i'm going to include a roof or not and then the next piece in, is really important because this is the one that is initializing you know where the walls are going to be so wall zero is going to start a room position and then it's not going to have any rotation and then wall one is going to have a 90 degree rotation and then 180 and then negative 90 so this positions the the walls perfectly then i just basically just set the floors the floor count equal to a new floor i increment the floor count so the next time around the next floor it's going to be floor one and then right now i just set the room so i pass that into the floor so the floors know about the rooms and the rooms know about the walls that's kind of like the hierarchy that i have right now then the render piece is, is actually a lot simpler now i i basically optimize it then i loop through my floors i loop through my rows i loop through my columns then i get the information from my data structure which is going to be floors that that rooms i get the row the column then i create a new object and and this is new i, I wanted to keep things organized so i create a new empty game object where I pass in the row and the column and then I basically put all the walls inside of it so that I can keep everything inside of a room into a game object and I'm going to show you how that looks in the hierarchy so I add the rooms to the basically the, the list of rooms so get get one more room because I'm creating a new empty game object so I, I want to keep track of them so this is what I was saying 
I use this list to keep track of them and then I dispose them at the end and I'm going to show you that. And then I also add this transform. I add this room that I created to the current transform, which is Progen. Then doors for now um, are only added on the first floor. So that's what I'm doing here. So if this is floor number zero, I'm going to determine, you know, the percentage chance that I'm going to be adding a, a door. And this is what I do. I just do a range from zero to one. And then I determine whether that is less than or equal to or door percentage chance. If it is, I add a door prefab. Otherwise, I add a wall. And then and then I just pass in the room and the room go because I need to create the prefabs for all those. And then I do the same thing if it's not room, if it's not room uh, floor number zero, then I look at the windows. I don't add any windows on the first floor and that's just right now that might change, but I do the same, the same logic in here, whether I need to add a window or not. If, if the chance is within the threshold that I tell it, I, has, I add a window prefab, otherwise I add a wall. And then this is the method to basically to place the prefabs correctly and then whether I have a roof or not. This also spawns the prefab. So I just refactor this just so that it makes it a lot easier. The other piece that is really important that I want to optimize is the process that I go through remove the inside walls. So this is how it works right now. I'm just basically marking things that have the same position inside of the building. And if they have the same position inside of the building, then I know that I, that I need to remove them. That's basically what this is doing. And then the clear goes through or list that I told you above. And then it just destroys them and then it clears itself so that we can keep everything everything clean so that that's basically everything that i added i don't think i added anything to the to the wall i probably clean it up but i'm gonna make this code open source at some point so don't worry about it it's going to be available to you so let's go ahead go ahead and go back into unity and i can show you one last thing which is to show you how the the components are now organized and, and I like it this way because when I'm troubleshooting, it just makes it a lot easier. So you can see that every single one of these is a room. So room zero, zero, this means that this room is a, a row zero, column zero. This room is a row zero, column one. So it just makes it, like I said, a lot easier to deal with in code and also, you know, for, organi for organizing things. So that's what that is. And then if you look at the room itself, you can see that I have door simple. I don't think I name them. I name them correctly. I need to do that. These need to have a number. Oh, they do have a number, but they have the word clone. I'm gonna remove that word clone from them. And it looks like everything is. But that allows me to track. You know, if I need to log it or or whatever it is, they all have a unique, basically a unique identifier. So that's everything that I have right now that I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to be adding a lot more functionality to this. I want to. Also add new functionality on the next video where each floor it's gonna be, you know, if I want to randomize the the length. So think about, you know, making making a building where, you know, we have basically a two by two here, we basically is extending twice. But what if we wanted to extend once? Or what if we wanted to, you know, you know, it just changes the way that you look at buildings and and I'm also gonna be looking at some references from real buildings and then see what we can incorporate into or procedural generators. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.